looking at a viewer's request on a video using uh, Pi Game to animate a character through like a uh, walk loop, a lock, uh, walk loop, or cycle. Uh, currently, I have two things in this folder I'm working in. Let's list that out. One is a folder. If I list out what's in that folder called walk, you'll see that we have uh, four PNGs. Let me open this here. This is what it looks like. We've got four PNGs. They're the Space Marine from Doom. I just got those through a Google search crop them out. They're PNGs with transparent backgrounds and that's going to be our walk cycle there. They're all called doom underscore w1, 2, 3, and 4. So they're numbered in order. Go ahead and close that. Now the other file in here is going to be our main script file which I've already started just to save time because it's going to be kind of a long tutorial. Um, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor and it's the base script that I pretty much always start off with. Um, so if you don't understand what's in this script so far, you need to watch my previous tutorials because you, you need to know the basics of Pi game before you jump into something a little more advanced like this. I mean, this isn't very advanced, but it's, you need to know the basics first. Anyway, I'll go over this real quick. We have our shebang line telling our operating system this is a Python script. We're importing some modules. Normally I import Pi game and sys. I'm also importing glob in this case, which is going to allow us to access uh, the file names of the folder walk so we can grab the names of our... Um, images. I'm also from Pygame importing all. I've been told not to do this, but that's how I know how to do it. It imports more than necessary in the memory. Um, so I'm admitting right now, this isn't 100% proper, but it works. So before people comment and, and give me a hard time, I'm admitting that that's not the best way to do it, but that's how I know how to do it. Um, and it's not uncommon to do it this way. Um, I create two variables here, height and width for our screen size. I'm going to make kind of a really wide screen here, height of 400, width of 800. Then we create our screen object, which is a Pi game display, and we're setting the mode, the height and width, to the variables height and width there, H and W, or width and height. Then we're going to create a clock object using the Pi game module, the time function in there, and the clock function within that. Uh, then we're starting our main while loop, so while one, it will loop forever until we break out of it. I'm just going to fill the screen with black each loop. That means the background is going to be black. Um, obviously, you could do other things like images and stuff, but this will clear the screen using RGB000, which is black, the absence of color. Um, we're going to say uh, use our clock object that we create up here and set the ticks to 60. That will limit this loop to 60 times a second, limiting it to basically 60 frames a second, and if you can kind of think of it that way. That allows for, in the future, if computers get super fast compared to what they are, Nowadays, the game will still run without being super fast. It basically limits it to that at the most. It may be less if your computer's slower. Then we're going to do a for loop to check Pi game events. So we're checking basically user inputs in this case, keyboard presses and mouse gestures and button presses, whatever. Um, and we're going to create a variable called event. And if the event type in this case equals Pi game quit, so basically if we're Clicking the X in the top right of our Pi game window, we're going to use the sys module to exit out of the script. And then at the end of our loop, we're going to update the display each time. So that's what we've got so far. And uh, just for fun, I'll show you what it does. It basically just gives us our main screen here. Ta-da! And I can click the X and it kills out the script. Okay. So next, we're going to start to create our character, our main player, and we're going to put that into a class. This is something uh, I didn't do in some of the basic videos. I've done it in some of the more advanced videos. Um, basically, putting it into class is basically creating our own object and allows us to create more than one if we want. So if we want more than one player, we don't have to write out the whole new script for another player. Uh, we're going to define a function, underscore, underscore, init for initiate, and we're going to set a variable called self. That means it knows that when we do dot self, or self dot something, we are talking about the player itself. So we might have x in the different places for variables, but self dot x will be x for this uh, player. Um, and we could have more than one player, and it would know which one we're talking about. So in this case, we're going to say dot uh, self dot x equals 200 and we're going to do self.y equals uh, 300 and that's what we're going to use for the original placement of the character uh, so um, 200 over and 300 down will be what we're uh, doing here we're going to say self um, 
next let's uh grab our uh our characters well we're going to set some variables for speed and stuff that we're going to use later on now so i'm just going to say we're going to set the speed initial so the initial speed to 10 and then we're going to set the self dot animation uh speed equal to well at this point self oh no i typed that wrong twice uh self dot animation speed initiate so basically here uh we're setting the what we're going to have as the initial speed of the animation um and basically that's going to be a countdown the higher this number the slower the animation uh and but then we also need to set what this current speed is and the reason we do that is because um we need to reset it each time we count down to zero. You'll see as we move on into the tutorial. Also, I want to note that this is how I came up with doing this. I didn't actually look at any tutorials on doing this, so I don't know if this is the best way to do it. This is what I came up with. Um, so next, we're going to set the animation. And so basically, we're going to grab, um, basically make an array of the four images. So we're going to say glob. We're going to use the glob module and the glob function within that module. And we're going to say walk forward slash doom underscore w asterisk dot png. Okay, a few things here. That's what we named the, that's our walk folder we're going to be looking in. And we're going to look at all of them that say doom underscore w. Um, and this way, we do it this way instead of just asterisk dot png as if we wanted to use other animation um, frames for other animations we can put them in the same folder and they could be called other things another thing is I'm using forward slash here really not proper because that will work on pretty much every operating system but Windows you would need to change it to a backslash but to make your script compatible with multiple operating systems you would want to use the um, OS module which allows you to basically replace that with uh, a function that does both but since uh, most of my viewers are Windows you or sorry <laughs> Linux users um, we, uh, I'm just going to save my time and do that, even though I'm admitting right now, uh, you should make your scripts cross platform, uh, so they should work on every operating system. That's uh, kind of sloppy not doing that, but this is more of a tutorial than an actual product I'm going to be distributing, you know? Um, next, uh, just kind of an issue. I thought uh, by default, this would put things in alphabetical order, but it doesn't. Um, I don't know if it goes by date. I didn't really play with it much. But if we do self dot n, so we're taking the object we created here, and we run it through sort, it will put it in alphabetical order so that I know that the frames are in the proper order since they're numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, next, we're going to set the self dot any underscore pos, so animation position, to 0. That will be the first frame. and self dot any max so now we need to figure out okay we're going to start at the first frame right now we know we have four frames but that might change in the future maybe we'll add in more frames and we don't want to have to change that each time so what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh any max and we're going to say len for length and we're going to find out the length of self dot any which is basically this array we created here this will give us the output of four because there's four things within that. But since the array starts at zero, it's actually going to be zero, one, two, and three. We have to subtract one from that. So basically in this particular case, our self animation max will be three, which is what we want, not four. If you're getting lost, then you need to look over some basic videos before watching this one. <laughs> Next, we're going to set the um, image that we're going to display and we're going to say pi game dot image dot load and we're going to load the image self dot any so we're looking at the array that we've created and we're going to start with the first one which will be zero so we have our walk cycle here that we're grabbing our self any and we're looking at the first one of the four in that array and that will be our initial image and then 
In a second here, we're going to create another function called update. And we're going to run that update right now when it initializes. So we're going to say self.update. And we're going to pass it a 0. That's going to be the position. That means it's not going to change the position. As you'll see here in a moment, when I say define update self underscore POS.